All right, we're going to make a candy cane using our pen tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the pen tool. And with the pen tool, for this process, you can either do the shape mode or the path mode. It doesn't matter. If you do a path, a shape, it will fill it in as you're going. If you do a path, it'll do that, and then we'll fill it in later. Either one will work just fine. Uh, and then we're going to do just like the tutorial we saw. We're going to go with three points here, three points up here, one here, one, two, three down here, one, two, three, four, and then back to the beginning. And then just like the tutorial, we're going to use the convert pin tool to pull each one of these out just a little bit to start to get our curves. And notice the direction I'm pulling. I started, I made this shape in a clockwise direction and I'm pulling these pulling these uh, anchor points out in that same if I didn't do that you see how it flips over on itself so if you see that um, pull that in the proper direction that should get you what you need now once you've got them all pulled out it's still not perfect and that way I can now come in and use my path select and direct select a path select selects the entire path and moves it around the direct select will select specific points. So if I want to move just this point, I'm going to draw a small box around just that point, and I can get just that point going. Now, when it's highlighted, you can redo the handles, little magnet type things, or you can move just the points or both. Okay? I'm going to take a second to get this kind of sorted out a little bit better than what I had it. Uh, you can select more than one at once, so I can select all three of these at the bottom. Kind of align those a little better. Get this going like that. Now this takes time. I'm not going to lie, it takes practice, and that's why we did our our uh, pen tool game to help us with that. So if you're still struggling with the pen tool in general, go back and play that game some more. It's a great way to get good practice. So. If you did do this as a shape, it should already be filled in. But if you didn't, and it's a path, you're just going to come down here to your uh, your shape layers and do your adjustment layers and do solid color. And the color she wants in her pro in hers is a light gray, okay? A light gray. And I hit OK. And if you don't want to see these paths anymore, Control H will hide it. You can see here in the view. Extras, control H will hide it, which makes it go away. But it's still there. It's still a shape tool, so that's a good thing. She says to delete the path. We don't want that. Next, I'm going to add a solid color layer, and she chooses a dark red. And But she does a blank layer with stripes. We're doing a solid color layer because it's more editable in the long term. I'm going to take this mask, and I'm going to invert it so that it's all black. If you're using a different program, you could use the paint bucket and fill it in. And now I'm going to take my paint brush and make sure that my brush is not on zero hardness. I want it to be nice and crisp. And I want the brush to be about a third of the width. And with white on this black mask, I'm just going to draw my curves. There it is. Now to make them stick, we're going to do a clipping mask. So I'm holding down Alt, and when I hover over this line right there, you see that it changes into the clipping mask icon. And then I'm going to click one time. Remember, though, you can still do it from here. Here's Release Clipping Mask Now, or it would show you clipping mask, Create Clipping Mask. You can also do it here, or you could do it with the keystroke that you just saw. Um, next, I want to add a shadow layer. She does more um, more stripes in her tutorial, and if you'd like yours to look a little more realistic, you can certainly do that. But use these same steps. Use the uh, solid color layer. But now I'm going to do solid color. She chooses a, a dark gray. I think it's 747373, three, something like that. We could do that right now, 747373. Seven, three, seven, three. And that's where you plug in those numbers that you would see on that tutorial, and then hit OK. And then I'm going to, again, hold down Alt and clip it. It's making the whole thing gray, so we're going to go to Properties, and Invert. Just like we did for the red layer, we set it all up, except this time it is gray. And then I'm going to get another brush that is 0% hardness. And click on the mask, make sure I'm on the right layer, make my brush a little bit bigger. And she shows us to color 
right through here and you can see because of that clipping mask that brush is just hitting on the candy cane and candy cane only now to get it to look like shadow this is our blend modes and I'm gonna come here to where it says normal and I'm gonna pull down normal and do multiply and that makes it look more like shadow we're going to do another layer. This one's for highlights, though, so solid color yet again. We're going to go white. OK. I'm going to hold down Alt and clip it. Click on the mask and invert the mask again, just like we did before. Now then we have our uh, highlights ready to go. And again, she colors just a little bit on this edge, just a little bit around this edge, just barely doing it. And then she has some lines going right down the middle for that highlight like so and then she changes it to a blend mode of overlay and turns the opacity down just a little bit and then there is one more layer that she adds again is another solid color layer white click on invert the mask again and again some of these don't matter what order we do them in but I clipped it also inverted the mask and set up a solid color layer now then she does just a few little spots of highlight and just changes the opacity doesn't change the blend mode on it and there you have it now the last thing she does she gets back down on this layer it's important to be on the candy cane layer this is the one with the cane on it and she adds a drop shadow just like we added bevel and emboss and all that stuff it's drop shadow it's right here and you can change the angle and you can change the spread and the size to get it looking just the way you want it and then you hit OK um, one step that we did in the tutorial she gets a blue background we could do that with a solid color layer instead of um, the paint bucket but uh, that is a more editable way of doing that tutorial that we looked at in class.